of the Parking Commission of New Canaan. It's 201. Yeah. We have a quorum, and as much as we have Laura Budd, Peter Ogilvy, and Jennifer Donovan, and myself, Keith Ritchie. Um, we are here to discuss the implications on parking in the center lot of the new library proposal. Um, I suspect this meeting will take a while, so hope everyone will be patient. We'll go further the next, you'll see. Um, the first one uh, I'd invite to speak would be the organizers of the new library proposal. And so that would be either Lisa or you, Bob, who, uh, who would that be? Uh, it would be Lisa. Lisa. I don't see her here on the screen, but I'm sure she's here somewhere. Right? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Right. Um, Keith, may I please share my screen? You may. I've got to find you. Let me see where you are. Um, There's a twin bed on the couch. Huh. Two chairs on the couch. The couch. The two Keith, I think we need to ask everybody to mute. There's a lot of people with other sounds going on. Yeah, okay. So, um, Lisa, will you speak up so I can see you? No, here I am. Oh, there you are. Okay, and so you, you've got your chart up. Uh, not yet. Uh, oh, okay. So, where? You're still in. It seems to be working now. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, as most of you know, I'm Lisa Oldham. I'm the executive director of New Canaan Library. And thank you very much, Keith, and the rest of the Parking Commission for this special meeting to discuss uh, the option of using the center school lot for parking for the new New Canaan Library. Um, as you are aware already, uh, we had a, a plan initially in concept that saw us putting our parking under our building. About a year ago, we discovered that due to parking considerations, that that was not a viable plan and wouldn't be able to go forward. So we're here today to ask uh, for permission to use a small block of parking spaces during the construction phase for New Canaan community members who wish to go to the library. And then subsequent to the completion of the project, a larger block of parking spaces for the New Canaan community to use when they come to the library. And in addition, um, I'll just say at the outset, uh, we are prepared to discuss with um, town people at town to, that we will pay for this as well. Okay. So, um, Keith, thank you. You sent me a, a comprehensive list of questions that you wanted to see answered in this meeting. Um, and I'll go through those um, in the form of a presentation here. Um, you did ask me uh, who was our parking um, engineer and his credentials. That's Christopher Cardney, uh, lead APPE. He's the vice president. Uh, a vice president for civil engineering and geotechnical engineering at Langen. And another engineer, traffic engineer from Langen Consulting is actually here with us today. Her name is Catherine Gagnon. Uh, she both, Catherine and our lawyer, Ted O'Hanlon are on the call and will be available later if required to answer further questions. Okay. Before we get started on the parking, uh, I have a bit of information to provide context for this question. There is no current regulation in New Canaan for library parking. Additionally, we see between 700 and 1,000 daily visitors to the library. On our block are two traffic lights controlled by the state on state roads. And at peak times, again, pre-COVID, we would see over 100 cars per hour leaving the library lot. Library visitor numbers have held steady since 2013, 
for the last six years, you'll see that our average number of, of library visitors throughout the year has hovered around the 200,000 mark. But the way people use the library has been changing over time. And over this last six years, you can clearly see that the attendance at programs has been driving that change. We saw a peak in 2019 of 38,500 attendees to our programs. Obviously, 2020 saw us with one full quarter uh, happening after the shutdown of COVID, and so that's why I've not included it here. The way those visitors manifest, the, the patterns of traffic into the building um, is much more nuanced than just those big numbers. So you can see here both the Saturday patterns and the Thursday patterns. This is for the 18 months that preceded COVID. You can see on a Saturday that we have a peak around 11 a.m. and that on a typical weekday, we use Thursday as the example. And this is an aggregate average of all the Thursdays in the 18 months prior to COVID and all the Saturdays in the 18 months prior to COVID. You see that the numbers start going up from three o'clock and peak around the five o'clock mark before coming back down. You'll also notice that the proportion of that traffic during peak times is children and families. It's an important thing to note since obviously children don't drive cars. On this slide, you're able to see the two lights and you're able to see also the shape and length of the sides of the block. Uh, these, these sides of the block are about uh, between 300, 360 feet long each. And this is important to understand some of your questions later on. Additionally, in the 18 months before COVID, the typical rate of use of the center school lot was about 33% empty. And by the way, of the cars that were parking there, 15 of those belonged to library employees who like others in the scheme, um, make use of the lot as employees of a downtown business. And in our proposal, as you know, uh, we have said that all library parking would, would be uh, not only off the library site, but off of this site, as per earlier agreements with the town in 1977. Since the beginning of this year, when town issued, I believe, something in excess of 200 permits for this lot um, for free, uh, they're now being given away for free, it is still 50% empty on a daily basis. Yeah. This just, just let me confirm that. In fact, I'll have some exact day-by-day uh, -day figures at various times of day, and that's it's at least 50% empty. This image was taken during a period of time prior to COVID when the lot, uh, before it went free, um, and you can see that, it, well, you can't see, but it's a Monday um, in the afternoon, and you can see that it is there. There is at least thirty-three percent, thirty-five percent empty. And then imagine if you took another fifteen cars away for the library employees who previously paid for those spots. Keith, you asked to see the site plan as it currently is, um, and so here's here is that. Yeah, that's helpful. And so, um, and pardon me for interrupting a little bit, but you're showing an entrance right off of South Avenue, and I gather that's for drop-offs and maybe there's a little handicap parking there? There is not, uh, because there's no door for a, a, a person, a, a person who is not fully mobile, if they parked there, there is no easily accessible door for them to enter the building on that side. So, so that is for deliveries, for the rubbish service, and that sort of thing. Okay, it is, so it's not a drop-off for children. Okay. It is not, no. But there is a pull-off bay, which um, I'm not sure, you, you can't see the street here, but on the Maple Street side, near the entry terrace, to the left of the entry terrace, there is a pull-off bay where a couple of cars can pull off for somebody who is less mobile can get out of a car, whether with a wheelchair or, or, or any other issue, and or for people to hop out to be able to, to drop off books with ease. Okay. 
So <clears throat> one of the questions that you asked um, was about um, why the, the parking underground didn't work. And so while I'm not an engineer, I can describe that in, in, in a little bit of detail. And then later on, we can have, um, we can have the engineer uh, on the call speak to that more if, if we need to. Um, <clears throat> The issue was due to the traffic congestion. In our original plan, we had both entrance and egress coming out. Uh, and I don't know if you can see my cursor, but it would have been coming out about here, um, yeah. out from underneath the building. And this would have caused, it was determined that this would have caused a, a, a queuing up problem, especially during peak term times, all down Main Street, as well as creating queues backing up the other direction uh, for people wanting to enter. Um, and it would have been because of the huge volumes of cars coming and going at peak times that this would have created a part a, a traffic situation that was untenable and unviable. And uh, we confirmed that never before has a project in New Canaan that received such a low grade for parking as this did got through P and Z. And so once we learned that we couldn't undertake the plan as we had hoped, which I will just restate was our preferred plan. It's an elegant solution. It was the one that we had all hoped for. We discovered this about a year ago when we engaged the architects to move from a conceptual plan, which we had a conceptual drawing into an active phase of designing schematic and then design development. And of course, now we're into construction documents. When we started that process, this was one of the first pieces of work that was carried out. And we discovered very early on that this was going to be a problem. We immediately turned to trying to solve the problem. And what I'm going to show you next are some sketches of some of the options we looked at to try to retain parking on our site. This you can see is the original plan parking under the building with both an entrance and an egress onto Main Street. You can see the proximity to the corner of Maple, which is one of the challenges. Um, we did look at a way of moving it further along on Main Street, but it didn't alleviate the problems that were created. This next slide shows what it would look like and how many spaces we could get if we were to forego the green and create a parking lot on the corner of Main and Cherry Street. This option would have seen a long tunnel stretching from under the building and leading out onto Cherry Street. Obviously coming out into the middle of an even shorter block with two lights, one on the other end, clearly is a challenge for the traffic in the area. Parking under the library with entrance and egress on south. Again, a long ramp, a lot of engineering costs, uh, but the same situation given the lights and the, the proximity to the traffic. Finally, an entrance and egress onto Maple that involved both ramps and tunnels um, that, that created uh, uh, an option to get in that was not fully drawn out because you can see at the, the top corner, the bend, the ability to circumnavigate from down in those tunnels and around to get inside was not viable. And the cost to do these, all of these projects that show the underground parking ranged from 100 and, uh, just under $120,000 to $130,000 per parking space. At the same time, we had done value engineering, which saw the size of the building shrink, meaning that the number of cars we could fit underneath the building reduced to 60. So not only was the cost up between 120 and 130,000 per each, but we, could, we, we had fewer spaces available to us. None of these were deemed to be um, uh, viable options from a traffic flow point of view. And so that is how we ended up uh, 
going to town and asking if perhaps we might be able to use the adjacent parking lot. This is the, a version of what might be possible when we have finished our um, project and we have the larger block of parking available for New Canaan community members who wish to visit the library. So I'll now try to go through the questions that you've put to us, Keith, and give you some answers. Thank you. You asked that we explain um, why having cars exit onto Maine is a less uh, is it less preferable than having cars exit onto Maple Street. The use of Maple Street allows for better vehicular circulation of library patrons, both in parking areas as well as within the roadway network. Patrons can enter the parking lot from either South or Maple instead of a single driveway. When Main Street and South Street are congested, exiting cars can queue on Maple Street where there is more room for vehicular queues. Maple Street is approximately 30, 300 feet from the intersection on Main and Cherry. And if the Main Library driveway were between Cherry Street and Maple Street on Main, for example, exiting vehicles would be closer to the stop bar for Main Street at Cherry, which would further increase congestion at this approach. Your next question was to quantify the benefits of having cars exit onto Maple Street. In addition to what I just uh, said, there was an additional risk of cars queuing down Main Street at peak times while trying to enter the parking area, further exacerbating the congestion on Main Street created by the exiting traffic. To your next question about the various different plans. The original concept drawings for the proposed new library included our preferred solution to parking which would have seen parking under the new building. When we engaged our design team, Centerbrook, in June 2020, to take us from concept drawing through the year-long design process, which is, we will culminate shortly in a set of buildable plans, the first step was to commission Langen engineers to evaluate our parking solution. We were disappointed to learn the, the report based on their investigations, found that our planned parking would create a traffic situation around the perimeter of the library and environs so un unsatisfactory as to receive a very low grade. Upon inquiring, we learned that no project with a parking grade like this has ever been previously approved by the New Canaan Planning and Zoning Commission. We also learned that the only direction that we could have an egress from our site that would provide a viable option, that is the least impact on traffic congestion would be to the south, that is Maple Street. During the same time, after the schematic design work was complete and new estimates were produced, the library conducted extensive value engineering, including among other changes, a reduction in the footprint. We commissioned our architects and engineers to explore all the possible options for parking, including six versions that retained the parking under the building. Um, you've seen the diagrams of how we use the land, the diagrams proposed for the use of center school lot. Uh, the, number of park, the number of parking spaces uh, required for library staff. Since 1977, the last time the library had a, a planning and zoning approval, the library staff have always parked off site, but that number is 26 that we would need today. Two independent traffic engineers have conducted uh, research and have written reports about the number of parking spaces required for this project. As there is not a regulation in New Canaan specifying the number of parking spots required for a library, each engineer took a different approach and yet we understand that the totals were very close. At the time of writing, I hadn't, at the time of writing this, these answers to you last week, I hadn't yet seen the report from the consultant that town was looking at, 
our, our engineers had come up with a number of 90 minus the number of parking spaces for our staff at 26, getting us to a number of 64. But obviously, since there was no regulation and there's many ways to look at this, we will work with town to agree the number um, that, that seems to be the best number for the community. The last you mean, question. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, so you're saying it's either 76 or 64, depending on which expert we talk to? Correct. Thank you. The last question you asked was that I <clears throat> that we estimate the use of the auditorium. Uh, the library is the community's platform for lifelong learning. Experiential learning through attending lectures, workshops, and other in-person programs is highly sought after in our community. In the year that ended June 30th, 2019, the library presented 1,589 programs to a total of 38,441 attendees. Of those, about 400 were held in the auditorium. The majority of those were in the evening, typically at 7 p.m. or on the weekends. Some were held during weekdays. In addition, about 100 community meetings or other events were held in the auditorium by other local nonprofits, both in the evenings and occasionally during the day. The provision of this space for the use by the community, particularly the nonprofits who serve our town, is an impart, important part of the library's mission. Looking to the future, we expect that the improved and larger auditorium will attract more community use of varying types. The typical library use will continue to be after 5 p.m. up the use of the auditorium will continue to be after 5 p.m. on weekdays or weekend afternoons with occasional midweek daytime use. In the near term, we'd see the frequency of the library's use of the auditorium to grow only slightly. Thank you, Lisa, that was very helpful. Um, and now I, I think our order would be that we may wanna have the uh, engineer speak about parking. And then after that, maybe Tiger Man, I think you wanted to take us through some things. So I think unless you have specific questions, uh, Katie, Katie was able to come today. Chris, the engineer who wrote the report was not. She's here to answer any questions you have further to what I just said. She does not have a presentation. Okay. Well, so, uh, I mean, I have read, I've had the benefit of reading the memos uh, on the parking. Um, and, uh, but it's still useful for you to review how you came up with the numbers of the number of spots needed to tell the, uh, the people that are listening to this call. Would you mind doing that? Not at all. Hi, I'm Katie Gagnon. I'm a professional engineer with Langan Engineering. Um, we're the civil and traffic engineer for the project. Um, so our approach to determining a reasonable parking calculation for the library was to reference the Institute of Traffic Engineers Parking Generation Manual. It's considered an industry resource in determining parking needs and um, you know, is, is a nationwide resource. Um, based on the, the ITE, well, the ITE determines um, parking based on a square footage. So for the proposed library square footage, you can calculate out a weekday peak as well as a Saturday peak. So the proposed library being approximately 40,000 just under 40,500 square feet, we calculated a peak parking demand of 90 spaces based on, it's actually a, a statistics curve for a weekday and then 68 parking spaces on a Saturday. Using the higher number, we went with a recommend, recommended 90 parking spaces for the library. Okay, so peak of 90. Um, and, and about what time of day is that peak? Uh, would you expect that to be hit? Um, well, the peak for the library tends to be, I think it's like four o'clock on a Thursday. Okay. It, it's useful to know for people listening to the call that the Morse Court lot, we generally stop enforcing rules after pretty much after four. And there's usually a number of spots available there. So I'm sorry, it's 445 to 545 is the peak traffic at the library. Okay, so then what I said is a little less relevant. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but it's, uh, 
it, it, it's still also useful just for people to realize that we do have the Morse Court lot, which is also adjacent to the, to the library. Uh, do any of my parking commissions have any questions or comments at this point before we move on? No, that just to be clear, that 90 peak, that includes employees, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So that really means 76 because the 24 people are parking in St. Aloysius parking lot. So it's, it's 64, 90 minus 26 gets us to 64. And yes, okay. we park, uh, we park off site somewhere. Okay. Well, wait a minute, 90 minus 26, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Okay, so what was the number of 76 that I heard at one point? That's the Keith, that's the town number of 102 minus 26. Okay. Thanks, Tiger. You're welcome. Um, I think you're uh, almost next up, but I wanted to ask uh, Michael Galante if you wanted to uh, say anything at this point. Yeah, thank you. Mike Galante, Hardesty in Hanover. We are the town's traffic and planning, uh, traffic and parking consulting on, on the library project. And just briefly, everything was covered in, in a lot of details. So I just touched on a couple of things. We've been involved with the town probably since last summer, uh, looking at traffic, preliminary traffic studies prepared by the applicant, parking evaluations. We did parking evaluations uh, separate from Langdon. And uh, at the end of the day, our numbers are very, very close. Uh, they used 90 spaces for a peak time of a library, which is Thursday afternoon. And the library is, I think, typically busy from three to six o'clock as a range. And then we would agree with that. Um, we used, uh, our numbers are slightly different. We came up with 94 spaces needed during that peak time. And it's only, a, it's a combination of rounding, if you will, of the square footage of the building and a rounding of the ITE trip, uh, parking generation rates uh, versus equations and so on. Um, the 76 spaces that was mentioned a minute ago is a combination, as Tiger mentioned, uh, our other methodology for looking at number of parking spaces needed. Uh, Lynn and Tiger and I looked at parking available at other nearby town libraries, Darien, Westport, um, and Richfield as a, as a three that we looked at as, as something similar to uh, New Canaan. And using that information, we came up with an average number of parking spaces at those other libraries at, as 102 spaces. So if you would take the 26 spaces away at St. A's for staff parking, which is there now and will be used in the future, that's where the 76 spaces comes from. So be on the safe side, as we always try to be as consultants, uh, whether it's Langdon or us, uh, we used 102 spaces as a recommendation back to the town. And that's what that's where that recommendation comes from. So it's slightly higher than the, the applicant's uh, parking count, but certainly in the same ballpark. Okay. okay. Very helpful. Um, Parking Commission members, any questions for, for Michael? Uh, yeah, Michael, uh, I'm looking at the table attached to the lawyer's opinion, Hardesty and Hanover, which I presume are all your numbers. Is that correct? Uh, I don't think I've seen that, that table. Well, they that cite to. Darien, Westport, and Ridgefield. That, those are all numbers, yes. Those are your numbers? Yes. Well, my mathematics is limited, but they say Darien has 64,000 square feet, 140 parking places, and that gives a parking ratio of 2.6. Correct. Well, my math isn't very good, but I, my calculator says it's 2.19. And then if I look at Westport, I get the reverse. Westport has 50,000 square feet, 133 parking places. You say the ratio is 2.44, and yet my calculator says 2.66, which are substantive divergences. And lastly, of course, Ridgefield, you say it's 2.6, my calculator says 2.34. Well, Can you I, explain what I'm doing wrong mathematically and why these numbers seem so off? Uh, offhand, no, I cannot. I will have to check that. Uh, and but I these apologize. are your numbers. These are my numbers. Yes, that's that's correct. So I let me let me check it and get back to you, everyone to make sure that I'm right. If and I'm this not is right, a then I have to this is a have legal opinion submitted to planning and zoning. 
Uh, I believe they have been, yes. Okay. Okay, I well, will have to double check. Yeah, we would love some clarification. Uh, absolutely, and you, yes, you will. Good question, Peter. Anything else for Jennifer or, uh, or Laura, anything before we move on to Tiger? Okay, Tiger, I'd like to give you the floor now. Okay, Keith. Um, you wanna share the screen? Uh, sure, if you let me. Yeah, I'm trying to. Let's see. Let me find your little box. Uh, can you speak up? Because it makes it easier for me to yeah. find. Just. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you just fine. No, I got to find your your box to do the share screen. Well, maybe I can do. Everybody else is clean shaven, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Almost. Well, try to show your. Can you? Do you have the? Uh, can you share your screen uh, now? Let me see. Yep, uh, I think so. Okay. I can see Tiger. There we go. Yeah, I see him now. There we go. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. All right, so the diagram we're showing right now, um, uh, there it is. The, uh, in essence, um, is, a, <clears throat> is the allocation of what we feel would be, uh, uh, given the 76 parking spaces needed by the library, um, the allocation of the center school lot itself. Um, given the proximity of the library uh, to Maple Street, we felt that the most northerly spaces um, at the center school lot would be the best um, for the library. Uh, we also feel that incorporating all of the disabled spaces would be a good um, idea given uh, the clientele. Uh, and uh, the permit holders might not necessarily be a, a disabled individual uh, taking a permit from the center school lot and then having to uh, navigate into the downtown. I think they'd probably find a better place to, uh, to park. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we do note that, you know, we have a couple of tow trucks parking in the center school lot. And there's some areas where um, they're better suited uh, to park. They're down in the, uh, you can see my mouse there, typically down in this area. So we might have to locate this space uh, as a tow truck designated and then possibly give one more space to the library in a, in a different location. But those are minor tweaks that uh, that we can take a look at um, as it moves forward. But this was a initial first go at the existing lot being if we weren't going to make any changes to it, you know, uh, given the fact that we don't know exactly what the traffic is going to be as the library takes off and uh, what the, how the town's going to respond post COVID. We felt it was probably best not to build anything at present, let them utilize the existing lot. And then um, a year from then, a year from the construction or a little bit after that, after the CFO, we can then uh, undertake a traffic study, take a look at it at that point in time, come up with a determination of spaces that are being utilized by the library, necessary for the lot, things of that nature. And at that point in time, uh, if there's a build out possible, um, tackle that at that time. But the uh, wasn't felt that we should expend any monies at present and um, alter the lot in any way until uh, until that happened. I don't know if you have any questions on the existing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to it. I, I have a little bit of thing uh, after this, but uh, sure. you have the diagrams of the construction. I think it'd be better to move on to that. You want to see the, yeah, as far as how would it be during construction? Yeah. Uh, so during construction, uh, utilization of the lot is somewhat similar to this. So uh, obviously the library construction is at the top uh, in the dirt area. They're proposing that their main construction entrance will be uh, just off of South Avenue onto Maple Street. So the majority of uh, truck traffic and, and deliveries and what have you will enter through there. Um, the majority of the lay down area will actually be in there as far as materials and things like that or heavy equipment. Uh, and then they were in need of some Connex boxes, some con contractor boxes, and then um, uh, obviously a trailer since it's a long duration uh, project. It's best to have uh, your management staff on site. So they needed a location for trailer and then some uh, ancillary parking for that staff and some of their tradesmen. The majority of the tradesmen will park off site 
Uh, so if you see inside this blue area, that's the fenced line area of what will be utilized for uh, center school. Oh, so I'm sorry, for the center uh, school lot. Uh, and then we relocated the connex boxes onto a grassy area here with a subsequent small portion of contractor parking. Uh, they were originally placed inside the, uh, on the pavement itself. We probably felt it was best to get them off the pavement. They don't need to be on pavement. They could be on the grass and then just have access for the contractors. And then we added a walkway through the grass here and a walkway through the grass here, given that if the permit holders were all parking through here, we didn't want to have them have to navigate around, especially in snowy conditions. So we felt it was best to give them an area through the grass through here that they can walk out either wherever they're going to go downtown or here directly out to uh, South Avenue. The trees in the in the rendition are just basically placed there. We don't feel that there's any major trees that would be disturbed by any uh, any uh, placement of a of a pathway. <clears throat> in this case, in this situation, it actually allows you to separate construction from um, the rest of the patrons that are utilizing the lot. The majority of the construction, the construction activity will be in this corner here. As far as truck traffic, felt it was best to keep their uh, their facilities and their use in that area as well, in the, in the northwestern section, and then allow the south, uh, south and southeast uh, and eastern sections to be uh, for permit holders themselves and for other patrons of the law. Um, that way that it's a nice access to the sidewalks. They can then venture forth either way and we're not getting crossing traffic as far as uh, someone coming into the lot and then uh, having a delivery truck in the, in the same location. We can keep them, keep them separate on either side. But I don't know if there's any <laughs> questions on that. Yeah, any questions from members of the parking commission? Yeah, to, uh, Tiger, how many spaces does that leave for permit holders after you fence all that off? It, uh, it was a very similar. I think that this, uh, given the fact that they were looking at 20 dedicated spaces for the library itself, so the parking, it, it comes down to almost the exact same type of usage post construction as during construction. So somewhere on the order of uh, 70 odd spaces will be utilized during construction for various library uses and then uh, the rest for permit holders in the same app post construction. Okay, so that leaves 90, 90 spaces six spots approximately, approximately. Okay. yeah I, I did an initial count before we put in the the two walkways and moved the connex boxes and i think i was in the 74 75 range at that time then we moved the boxes around it got a little bit uh and i didn't do a subsequent count okay uh, thank you tiger what would be the timing of you know when when will these connex boxes and all of this equipment and things be out there on this lot Pretty much for the the entire duration until they uh, finalize their build out and then start to take away the existing library itself, but uh, it'll probably be for the entire duration. They'll need a majority of the space. Um, and they're planning on starting this coming summer. That's a uh, uh, pending approval process. Yeah, that's that's a question for the library. To be honest with you. Okay, I think I recall a, a scene or hearing it was June that they were hoping for. That's my understanding as well, but uh, um, Lisa might be able to add more to that as far as their schedule. So Tiger, from June 2021 on, how long is this site tied up? I believe the construction is approximately, approximately two years. And pre-construction? I'm sorry, pre-construction? The, the proposal talks about a pre-construction period. Uh, I, I can speak about that. Thank you. Yeah, please. Um, so the pre-construction, uh, yes, that's not correct. Um, uh, in, in that by the time we get to this, uh, the pre-construction period will be finished. So there is no more pre-construction? By the time this, this plan is in place, we, we will be past pre-construction. Okay. And Tiger, could you reiterate, could you break down the parking spaces at, at center. Uh, I'm confused as to how many are set aside for contractors and their boxes, how many are set aside for library patrons, and then how many are set aside for New Canaan permit holders? 
with this new rendition, I didn't do a final count, but a, at first go, it was a, the approximately 75 or so were for the library itself, including their patrons. I'd have to recount now that we put in a couple of walkways and things, but it hasn't changed that, that dramatically. Right? So, so I'm I think sorry, 20, yeah. 20 during construction and up to 76 post construction. Paul Stone is on the call. He might be able to clarify that. So using subtraction, that suggests 50 parking places for the contractors. Yeah. No, no, the contractors are not. The contractors are going to park off site. So the, 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 all the tradespeople would park off site. So where do, who's using the 50 spaces? What, what 50 spaces? Well, be 30. There are 30 the tiger keeps there's, there's telling 40, us there's 46 75. spaces. There's 46 spaces marked out in this rendition here that wouldn't be utilized, would not be able That's to be utilized stone. by existing permit holders. Okay. To add that to the 20 dedicated spaces for the library, you get to 66 spaces. Correct. I get it. Okay. And who would use the That's 45 spaces that you identified? Is Those that are not for the contractors. Yeah, they're for the various tradesmen and then for the construction managers, other visitors to the site, things of that nature, and a, for a material, for some material storage as well. Okay. And what is the role of the St. Aloysius parking lot? Lisa? So uh, that is yet to be determined. We, we have, we, we have, the library staff has parked at St. Aloysius. Uh, since 1977, we are looking to um, enter into a new agreement with them uh, for the purposes of, of once this is, is done, but the library staff have been parking there for decades. And why not put the contractors parking over there? The contractors are not planning to park in this, in this lot during construction. The, the contractor parking will be mm -hmm. elsewhere offsite. Is that Elm Street or what? Oh, they, they, it is their responsibility to find their own parking mm -hmm. elsewhere. It could be on the edges of town and they could be driving in. We, that hasn't been decided yet. It won't be here. We're not asking for contractor parking in this lot. Tiger, how many employees might there be for a construction job of this size? There'll Paul be quite can a answer few. that. Right, that, 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 that's better for Paul Stone to answer. It can vary anywhere from 10, a dozen, up to 30. I'm sorry. It, it can vary from anywhere from 10 to 30, 35. Uh, but as Lisa said, the contractor tradesmen would be parking offsite, as is typical. And then they 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 shuttle in. They uh, get everyone in one vehicle, or they drop they drop them off, or they have a van to shuttle them to the job site. And Tiger, does that not represent a problem for the streets of New Canaan? We're asking, we have asked the library for a, uh, um, some answers as to where they will be parking or the proposal where they will be given the fact that we're in a downtown area. That was one of the discussions, uh, one of the topics of the discussion uh, at our last meeting. And we've had no answer. Well, it's been it's been less than three working days, and our construct we are still signing up our general contractor. When when that deal is signed, that'll be one of the things you, that they have to be responsible you need to for. Just upgrade the PO. Okay, so you'll send. Yeah. There's there's alternative sites, you know, the Armory, Talmadge Hill, and Boxcar High School, Boxcar. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions for Tiger or I'd suggest we move on? All right. Tiger, will you uh, undo your screen? Sure. Sorry, Keith. No problem. Let me, uh, let me share something on my screen. Let's hope I've got the right one up here. So I prepared some information before we go any further to help make this an informed discussion. Uh, Stacy Miltenberg, who's the head of the parking department, is on the call and she can speak to these figures, uh, confirming there's 172 spaces in the center lot. As of right now, we have 209 permits in that lot. 
and we'll have more on that in a second. And Stacy and her team have been going through that lot and counting the spaces that are taken. And, the, and to the far right here are the available spaces. And so far on their counts, there are more available spaces on every single time that they checked than the either 76 or any lower, you know, any lower number. And this, I should say, has been uh, pretty consistent historically. The center lot has always been underutilized. We've tried to do as much as we can to increase the utilization of this lot, but it has always remained underutilized. These figures, and I've highlighted just the line showing the center lot, um, we used to get between thirty-six dollars and $34,000 a year in permit revenue. We've recently begun a program to make the permits free. So this revenue basically has already gone away. Um, so we can't really charge the library proposal for that. There is metered revenue here, which is unfortunately I didn't show in these future years. That's still running around $10,000. An interesting thing to note is we had 249 permits sold in our 217 to 208, 2018 fiscal year. That number dropped to 240 in 1819, dropped to 227 in 19 to 20, and now we're down at 206, even though the permits are free. And you could argue that maybe that's because of COVID, but there's no denying there has been a decline in the permit numbers over these three years. And by the way, it's also for people who aren't familiar with parking, we always oversell lots. So the fact that there's 172 lots is relevant, but not determinative at all of how many permits we sell in that lot. This is going back to the chart that uh, Tiger Man showed. Um, and as he mentioned, uh, I pointed out an issue and pointed out again, we have tow trucks that we have allowed to park in this lot. You can see one here where my cursor is. You can see a couple more over here and one over here. And the police department have asked for us to uh, allow those permits to park there. They have to pay for the privilege, but allow them to be there so we can have tow trucks available in New Canaan and, and uh, nearby. Uh, I just wanted to show with this next chart, and unfortunately, this is just me with a, with a marker, basically. You could provide the same 76 spots for the library by doing your yellow line up over this way. And then you could leave all the tow trucks in this whole area uh, as unreserved. And you could still leave the tow trucks where they are, still provide the 76 spots. And then finally, um, I prepared this chart, which uh, you have to really compare, say, with this one. There's this large grassy area here alongside Maple. It's unutilized, it's not very attractive. There are no trees in this area. And one alternative I haven't seen is you could put, as I've shown here, diagonal parking along there, have a driveway in and a driveway out, and you lose a couple spots that way. You still pick up somewhere between 10 and 12 spots. And I would think that this could be done economically, but we'll leave that for another time. But I think the real focus here is our history has shown and our recent evidence has shown there have been enough available spaces to accommodate all of the, the library parking demand. Any comments from anyone, including people on my, well, the parking commission members? Okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen. Now I know there's a number of other people who wanted to uh, say some things here. And I know uh, first among those, I promised the uh, people for the farmer's market to, uh, to want to get there, uh, make some comments. And if they're on, please identify yourself and uh, speak up so I can find you. Hi, it's Patricia Spaghetti, Keith. Um, Lexi Gazzi was not able to join today, but I'm here. So I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, Patricia, why don't you, uh, I don't know if you have any slides or anything you want to share. But if you want to speak, that's fine. Uh, thanks and hi, everybody. Um, so uh, 
just wanted to say a few things. Um, first, the center school lot, I think everyone on the call knows has been the home of the New Canaan Farmers Market for the last 20 years. And I should say I'm a, a resident in town. And uh, last year I helped the market manager who is Lexi Gazi, I helped her um, go through all the process of setting up during the COVID. So I've, I've come to be a permanent volunteer now with the market. I was there every Saturday last year. So Lexi couldn't join, but we did prepare a statement which we share with the Parking Commission. And I'm gonna just share an excerpt of that for the record with everybody here. Um, last year, because of COVID, we actually counted the number of visitors at the center school lot. And we realized that there's change here underway. We support the market. Uh, we support the library project and, and everything. And we realized from what I've seen here that uh, it's probably not going to be practical, safe, or feasible to make use of the center school lot for the farmer's market during the construction period and um, to be seen once the construction is complete. But I just, uh, in terms of the location, the center school lot has been the perfect location for our farmer's market. It's adjacent to downtown. It's visible to people coming into town off of Main or South Avenue. Uh, there's parking conveniently on the street also at St. Aloysius and in the, the lot itself. Uh, with COVID, we've been able to have over 30 vendors spread out in that lot uh, very conveniently. We've had a safe traffic pattern. The lot is as much a park as it is a parking lot with the trees and the, the uh, careful landscaping that was done there. So it's been a really, really good location and will be um, it will be unfortunate if we do need to move the lot. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. So I know, you know, this may or may not be appropriate because this is specifically for the library discussion for the library and the use of this lot, but we will, um, with help from uh, Tucker, who we've already spoken with, uh, Keith, yourself, and you know anybody else here in town, um, Kevin, the selectman, will find an appropriate location to consider. Ideally, we would like to have a location that is in town and is walkable from for the many residents that do participate. Um, if I didn't mention already, we did have over 900 uh, people, which included many children coming with their parents during the summer last year on a typical Saturday when the, the markets open from 10 till two. So, um, yep, you know, Patricia, we, if you don't mind, I, I wanted to ask you a question about this chart, uh, sure. it's a very helpful chart and it is within the scope of the parking commission, all of these offsite parking lots that are, you know, municipally owned. Um, and, uh, I had a question. You show for the lumber yard. Um, you have under patron parking, you have limited, when in fact the lumber yard is considerably larger than the center lot. You also say, um, uh, you don't say easy access from other towns, when in fact it gives you access by a train as well as by all the usual other ways. And on bathrooms, you say yes to the center lot, and there is no bathroom in the center lot, right? and you have a question mark in the lumber yard. So can you explain those three, starting with the patron party? Why do you say limited for the lumber yard? Um, We're talking about on a Saturday, that lot will be empty and there'll even be the parking, the railroad station parking. Right, and it's a, it, it would be more than adequate. When I put this together, we hadn't gone and, and actually looked at the, the space. So you're absolutely right. There'd be sufficient parking. I am uh, concerned though about the lumber yard and the traffic pattern on Elm Street. That's my biggest concern, just because Elm Street is so busy. And you know, personally, independent of the market being there, I avoid Elm Street on Saturday in that part of town, uh, just because of 
people coming in and out of Walter Stewart and Acme and Grove Street in Carl Chevrolet there. I, I just think that my biggest concern for that lot, although it's more than adequate space, is the just the, the congestion that will be there for um, for cars and pedestrians. Uh, so and my concern then is, is just that traffic flow and I would appreciate feedback from yourselves on that and also from uh, Chief Kowalski. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Well, give me some immediate uh, feedback. I mean, right now, again, that lot is larger and at least in the pre-COVID days, it would be filled. And we've never really experienced a major traffic problem, people getting in and out. And um, I don't see that it's any worse than the center lot, which has access from either south, which is busy, or Maple, which you only get into Maple from either south or Maine, which are both busy. Uh, I don't see access being a, an issue. So, um, but again, I'm not trying to be dispositive here. What about bathrooms? Why did you say there is a bathroom in the old center lot uh, and there isn't one in the lumber yard? Right, so at the old center school lot, um, the library was gracious enough to let uh, the vendors, and this is specifically for vendors, not let the patrons, you know, be responsible for themselves, but it was convenient to use either the Gulf Station bathroom or the library facilities for the vendors. In the lumber yard lot, I wasn't sure if the facilities at the train station would be available for use. So that was the question mark. Well, I see Tucker nodding her head yes. I think we could talk to them and make it available. And I don't see the difficulty of moving a porta potty uh, over there either. Yeah, Keith, uh, Keith, uh, we, we control the train station and the and the the, the, the uh, bathrooms would be available. Yeah. Okay, that would okay. that would be a great help. Um, the other request that we would make on behalf of the farmers market is to be able to have a a sign or multiple signs or banners and one permanent sign that we could have in town much as Darianne and Westport do that say, here's the farmer's market, you know, here is where we have a farmer's market and it's Saturdays during, you know, from May through November. Uh, you don't know if you go down to the end of, I forget the street, but right there in, in Darien on Post Road, there's a permanent sign there that announces the market. So that would be one thing that would be really helpful to have something at the center school lot and maybe somewhere else in town at the railroad station that we could leave up to announce to people where we ultimately move the lot to. Well, very good point, Patricia. Do you want, uh, you know, now that I have your, your slides up, do you want to look, you know, you want me to go back or forth through any of these or have you covered everything? Um, I appreciate you doing that. You could go back um, actually to the, um, maybe the diet, yeah, let's see. Which the one? This one? A little higher? Yeah, the, the probably the diagram. The diagram, please. Is oh, uh, that one, not that one, this one? What is it, page four? Uh, page four. I don't see the page number, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, can you see what's on the screen? Is this what yeah, you these are these are all those were from last year from 2020 when we were looking at having a drive through model. So I don't think it's relevant for okay. this summer. So go back to the prior photograph. But I think we made the, the key point is that the town has been very good about supporting having the market in town. We acknowledge that with the plans, especially what was shared before now, you know, today that the center school lot is probably not going to be feasible during the construction of the library. We're sorry to hear that from the market's perspective, but understand, and then just look to work with the town on a suitable alternative. And, you know, for the, the things we just talked about, the lumber yard lot would probably be the most, um, you know, appropriate. The other things we talked about was the lot behind the, by the, uh, the backside of the teen center, which I didn't put here as an option um, in, in the upper lot. You know, those in the lumber yard are probably the, the two locations that make the most sense. We also looked at, you know, Waveney, but I think it's just too far out of town 
Okay. And there's too many other uses for the, the parking there for pedestrians in the, the park. So yeah. I think that the key thing is to continue to have the support for you know, the market, and then we'll work out the details with the appropriate groups of yeah. where we go. But and I would comment just before we leave the, the farmer's market that this really hasn't traditionally been an area where the parking uh, commission has gotten involved because <clears throat> it takes place on Saturday when there really, from our perspective, isn't much of a parking problem. So it's really been more of a public health and safety issue for the police chief and, and the health department to work on. Um, I don't know if Tucker or, or you or Kevin want to comment on this before we move on. I'd be happy to comment. Uh, I, I, this is Kevin. I, I fully support uh, supporting the, the market for uh, probably the lumber yard. I don't think Waveney Park is probably a good idea, but we can look at it. And um, and or the Playhouse lot. I think uh, you know, that you're talking about my neighborhood, Patricia. It's, it's not so bad on Elm Street, uh, Upper Elm Street on, on Saturdays. Um, and I think activity is good. That's all the folks that drive by are going to see the market. So I, I, I think I'm sure we'll be able to, to accommodate a really good plan. Now, keep in mind, it's not the library that's really creating this problem. It's our decision to accommodate workers downtown. And this was an experiment that appears to be working very well. The workers downtown, restaurant workers, uh, retail store workers, we want them to park away from the parking where sh shoppers and restaurant goers park. So I think, um, you know, unfortunately, the library situation has exacerbated it, but I think um, we, we will solve your problem. I appreciate that. And I know Lexi will too. So uh, thank you for your support. And uh, Tucker, thank you as well, because I know you've been very beneficial working behind the scenes on our behalf. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, All right, Patricia, thanks for Patricia, do you have any knowledge of the number of farmers market folks that actually shop in town? Is there a cross fertilization there between the retailers and the farmers market? You know, I, I think there is, I, I think there is some cross fertilization, absolutely. And it's not, you know, for adults and, you know, even for teenagers that come in and shop, um, I, I do believe that's the case. I believe from what we hear from um, visitors outside of town that come to the market, because I, you know, I was the Walmart greeter for the, the market last summer, a number of people, came to our market versus others because they like ours better. And I think, you know, they'll go get their groceries and then maybe go have lunch or do shopping. So absolutely, I think there's overlap. Have the retailers been supportive of the farmer's market? Uh, I think Tucker would better be able to answer that question. Um, Very we've interesting question. Many, um, yeah. Back in 2010, I was able to pull out my notes there was actually a request by most of the merchants on Elm Street to bring the market closer to town, even from Center School Market, because, uh, Center School parking lot, because they felt that um, it would enhance the, the, the probability of people bringing foot traffic into town. So I have all of my notes from several meetings that we had with the merchants then. I mean, that was 2010, and we all know what was going on then. But um, I think that same sort of uh, mindset could play here. I think it does enhance the downtown, the closer it is to town, as long as you make sure you've got traffic and things like that. I think it's good for both parties. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, <clears throat> I, uh, I think we're done with kind of what I would call the formal presentations. Uh, Keith, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure, Patricia. Thank you for joining us. And, and again, feel, feel free to stay because the meeting is, is open. Um, I did make an invitation to, to Andrea Sandor, who uh, an expressed an interest in this subject. And Andrea, I can't really tell with my view if you're on the call, but if you're on, would you like to say a few words now? I haven't seen her on, Keith. Okay, so maybe she didn't get on. All right, um, at this point, I'll turn this uh, uh, pending and we'll hold our discussion, I think, Parking Commission members and just uh, offer anyone, uh, let's start with uh, three minutes of open mic time. Anyone who wants to say anything about what we've heard so far and make their comments on the, again, the new library proposals impact on the center lot. 
Keith, let me just mention, to, you know, the Board of Selectmen will take this up tomorrow morning at 8.30. Um, and uh, so we will take the Park Commission's recommendation today. I see Kathleen on here. I don't, I, I don't know if Nick's on here, but uh, so we will take public comment tomorrow as well. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I thought I'd give people an opportunity. So if you have something, please unmute and, and uh, identify yourself. Hello. 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 Who's that? My name is Eileen Leiden, and I live uh, in New Canaan on Southwood Drive. And my concern is when um, Tiger was speaking about the um, number of handicapped spots and the accessibility of the library to people with handicaps. I know that anytime I've been to a meeting at night at the library, it's a lot of people who are baby boomers like ourselves and our aunts and uncles who are there. So I'm just curious about having just five spots in the lot and then is there anything more accessible for people to get to the library? That's it. Good question. Tiger, do I handle that or do you want us to? Sure. Uh, well, there's actually six spaces by code. Um, two of the signs fell uh, and uh, weren't subsequently striped, but it's, it's available for six spaces. Based upon 172 spaces, you need six. Um, and they are as close as you can get to the library in the lot itself. So as far as where they were uh, situated originally, they're as close in the current configuration as you can get to the library itself. Um, we don't have access to the library's location, um, but as far as the lot itself, um, the spaces are level, they're sound, they're, uh, they're well managed or maintained, and uh, we feel that they're in the best location to uh, supplement the library's use. Right, but you're you're not saying, and I and I put up the diagram of the parking lot just to help people think it through. But you're not saying they're as good as where they are today when they're actually on the same block as the library, so that a handicapped person doesn't have to cross the street. Keith, well, in, if I could share I, my screen, I can show you the proximity on a, oh, on sure. a slide I have. Please do. I'll stop sharing. If you can see here, this is the new front door of the library, and this is where those spots are. It is, it is just as close as where the, where the spots are currently in the library parking lot to the library's current main door. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm confused, Lisa. You were, cursor was showing around South Avenue. Yeah, I think, you're, I think you need to be at the bottom of the page. So, oh, sorry, we're off the page. I'm so sorry. Um, but well, that is about that is the same distance regardless. It 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 is the same. We've we've pasted it out. It's it's a very similar distance, if not just it's just as close from the new front doors to those spots as it is from the existing front doors to the, I believe, five uh, handicapped spots that currently exist in the library parking. Where you were pointing on the map just now. You had to cross South Avenue. Which yeah, sorry, I, I, I had the wrong. I had the wrong slide. It was okay. Ma Maple Street. That well, you, you will have to cross Maple Street. Could you show it on the proper slide? Yeah, I, uh, I thought that was the slide. I don't have that a slide that can show that well, right can now. Can you show the one that you had up at least, Lisa? Yeah, just um, okay. If we look at this one, can you can you um, can you see yeah. my slide? No, you have to show your screen. Yeah, so. Please put up your original slide that you showed the current configuration of your of your lot. What is it, library's gonna be? Yeah. It no, that, it still doesn't get us that one, Kevin, because it's it, it's cut <clears throat> off at Maple Street. But if we look at, if we look at the one about um, this one here, you can see here are, here are these spots that we're talking about and the front door of the library will be just here. And your spaces right now are above that to the front door of the library up there, right? 
Correct. They're, they're here no. now. Right. So people have to walk um, uh, over this little bit of a berm across this driveway and then up in. So it's much, it, it's not particularly different to the situation we have today. This okay. is Katie from Langen. Can I just say something really quick about the proposed um, we are also proposing as part of the library project a new ADA ramp, a new crosswalk that's a more direct crosswalk across Maple, as well as um, the, the rapid flashing beacons to enhance pedestrian safety at that crossing so that it'll be more visible, a straight connection and a new ramp down. Okay. I, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eileen. Good comment. Uh, Anyone else wish to make a comment? Yeah, I, I, have, a, I have a question. Uh, maybe I'm, my name is Sue Scannell. I'm a resident of New Canaan. <clears throat> and um, I may be behind, but I thought originally that you were going to have the parking underneath the new library. What? Yeah, you missed that. What Sue. happened to that? They gave the whole history of how that right. was the original plan, but then because of uh, results of a, a parking and traffic study that that, uh, that wasn't going to work. And so they, they, they feel the need to use the uh, center lot. And it so happens that the center lot is perfectly located and historically has had enough open spaces to accommodate their needs. Yeah, I did see all of that part, yeah. I just wanted to know what happened to the old plan. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Well, if you want to, the, there'll be a recording of this meeting which will be available yeah. and you can I listen to it again. Yeah you know, might help put you to sleep later. Okay, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Tiger, the question about the handicapped spaces, um, of the 90 spaces allotted for town permit holders, do they also require an additional six handicapped spaces? No, it goes by the total number in the lot itself. But if you were a permit holder, you'd be allowed to utilize those areas. We don't, we don't, uh, Stacy doesn't uh, basically. You're allowed if you're if you're disabled, you can use any space anywhere, any disabled space anywhere in town. So it's considered one big lot for two uses, not two lots requiring two sets of handicapped. Correct. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. it should be mentioned, Peter. That's a real benefit because right now the in the center lot that's basically used by people working downtown and, and or as an overflow for the library. Those handicapped spots are never used other than when I'm aware. The, the farmer's market. Now at least they'll be used. So part of the spots that we're giving up are you might say are the sleeves off our vest because they weren't being used anyhow. Um, I have a question. That, that Kimberly Norton, go ahead. Yeah. So um, I was just curious, my understanding was the library was gonna 80,000 square feet, is that correct? Uh, yeah, who's got the square footage there, Lisa? I, I didn't hear the question. Uh, my understanding was that the library was going to be 48,000 square feet, but I, it seems like that's changed to 40,000 square feet. So my first question, and I have a couple more, my first question was, how many square feet is the current library? A plan. It, it is around 40,000 square feet. I would have to um, check with um, Katie or Paul to get you a very precise number, but it is about 40,000 square feet. Okay. Yeah, I, I have the numbers. Do you want exact numbers or? Yeah, please. Okay. So the existing library is 39,475 square feet and the proposed library is 40,461 square feet. Okay, thank you. So my other question is more in the vein of, if, you know, um, the public's been kept in the dark about the different iterations of the library plan. So I was curious to know what other locations were explored by Centerbrook and the library for parking besides the location that's been ruled out. Because I would imagine that just like there was lots and lots of parking plans explored uh, recently, there's been other plans, and, and what was the, you know, can, can we be um, apprised of what those locations were and why they were ruled out and why that particular underground location 
was chosen because I'm I'm also under the impression that there was a storm drainage problem there and a water table issue that could perhaps exist on that corner. So I was just curious why that location was the final parking location and then what came before it. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure how to answer all of that. I can say that the um, the issue with storm drainage has nothing to do with any of this. Um, and I guess you're referring to earlier designs that were done back in 2012 and you're wanting to know where was the parking then that was a completely different design. Um, and that did also have parking partly under the building and partly on the corner of Maple and Main. Okay, um, I was actually interested in what's happened between 212 and now, which is about eight and a half years or eight years. Uh, you know, um, let me just let, let me intrude here, Lisa. Um, the purpose of this meeting is to discuss the impact on the center lot from the current proposal. Um, the history has been interesting, and we spent a lot of time in the beginning of Lisa's presentation going through the various alternatives that they looked at. But now we're presented with this present alternative and it's outside of the scope of the parking department to consider what the plans might have been or even how they might change. We are being asked to address this particular plan and its impact on the center lot. So I'd like to stay with that, Ms. Norton. If you have questions along those lines, I'd like to hear them. I, that's noted, Keith, and I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I think it's just important for the public record to understand that most residents in the town have no idea what the library's plans have been regarding parking up until they were presented in January uh, of 2020. So um, I understand that this is a different venue, but the history of the library finding parking on their site has not been explored in this meeting. And I understand that's not the purview of this meeting, but I just wanted that to be noted. Thank you. You know, where I thought you were going to go is when you look at their plan, there is a lot of green space, which I'm sure will be lovely, but you know, some of that could have been for parking. And so there are trade-offs that uh, are always being made. Um, does anyone else have a comment? Hi, this is Lee Cromwell. Can you hear me? Yes. I have, I think it's a question for Tiger. Tiger Man. Yes, have a Lee. Um, in regard to the service vehicles and the um, tow trucks you mentioned, are, do any of those have anything to do? It was my understanding that the AC Auto Body Shop um, has some parking places there so that they do not park on East Maple Street, which is a residential street. I just want to know how that would be accommodated. Lee, you're correct. The, uh, the original consideration, this is going back probably a decade now, was the fact that AC Auto um, was utilizing on-street parking um, on Main Street at the intersection with Maple, say on the Western side, or on East Maple at the intersection with Main, both on the on either side of the street, on the north and south sides of the street at that point, and sight lines were becoming uh, problematic. So we, we uh, approached AC and asked them to uh, purchase a permit and utilize the, uh, the sp a space is more appropriate uh, up at Center School to get them out of the, you know, to uh, avoid the sight line issues and get them off the street itself. And the areas that Keith had mentioned um, are the areas that have the greatest uh, grass area behind them and uh, are the most accessible for a large flatbed to be able to back into the space. So we accommodated them in that regard. Um, so we, we'd like to continue that because we, we don't want to exacerbate a problem on the street itself by uh, not allowing them into the center school lot. <clears throat> yeah, Lee, that's why I made the proposal it, instead of this, where you can see the tow trucks here, where my cursor is and here, where the tow trucks are, so they have a clean way to get in and out. That we would, so instead of making those for library patrons, we make the library patrons stop here, and we get could give provide the same seventy six spots for library patrons 
uh, in my view, just as close to the library and, and not disturb the tow truck parking at all. But that's a nuance we can, we can address later, but we, you know, we are thinking about that and this may be part of our recommendations to, to do something like this. Keith, am I mistaken, but is that a tow truck on Main Street in the top right corner of your photo? I think it is, in fact. You're talking about right here? Yes, I am. Yeah. Shouldn't be there, but it looks like it is. Um, so we have, it looks like a number of tow trucks in the lot, as well as parking on Main Street. That's yeah, that's something I think Kevin has to address. We've asked them to always use the lot. At times, they say they're coming in to get their papers to go do another, you know, another pickup, things of that nature. They stop on the street there. That is a, a, a assigned spot. It is a, it is available. It's um, but it's also you know, during, during the day. They, excuse me. It is also recurring. Yes, and they also we frequently them. see their truck there. We yeah. have asked them to to uh, not do that and utilize the space spaces up at Center School, but. Um, it's like some people don't want to walk, the tow truck showers don't want to walk either to back in and out of the, uh, their location. We'll ask, AC, we'll ask AC and CNH to be a little bit more diligent. They also park on East Maple Street, which is a problem with residents and children. Right. That's right, Mr. Kamrau. And that's where we try to get them out of there and get them into this uh, center lot. Hey, Keith, there's a piece of this that, that you didn't cover. I'd like to ask Tiger to address it. So, so I don't have to address it tomorrow morning unless we pick it up again. And that's if we do expand the lot in the future, if, if we need to expand the lot in the future, what that would mean. Do you mind if I have Tiger present that? No, that would be wonderful. Okay. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry, it has to refresh a moment. So what we did was we looked at three separate situations whereby what would be the, the ultimate build out of this uh, center school lot if um, it was determined a year post-construction, uh, when we hired a traffic consultant to come in, parking consultant to come in, what would it look like? Should we need additional spaces? This is one version uh, whereby, uh, say the least obtrusive version, whereby we would net 16 to 18 spaces, uh, predominantly in the southwestern corner. Um, we tried to maintain the same amount of grass space that we had throughout um through the area and then utilize a little bit of the area along the condos to the south and then <coughs> excuse me straighten up this entrance way and provide uh ingress e and egress to uh to this location this netted us approximately 18 spaces 16 to 18 if we take out the island here uh and here we get to 18 if we keep the islands we are at 16. um Again, it was the, the easiest buildable area, the most level, um, and the, what we consider to be the least obtrusive. If we went to a secondary look, if we needed a larger expansion, say, this would be uh, the next thought. This gives us, nets us 43 spaces. Um, so this gives you 43, but it starts to take up the larger footprint of the, of the, parking lot itself, we felt it was most important to keep this buffer along South Avenue, this grass buffer here. Um, and uh, at that point in time, Keith, we get to the point where we build out this area that we had spoken about before, this, this grass area that's here, and then the area here. Topographically, it is the hardest area to build. Um, with some large retaining walls, some older, larger retaining walls in the area that would need to be um, raised and also uh, basically bolstered. <clears throat> but this gives us a look of about 43 spaces throughout. Uh, should we need that? 
Uh, and then if we had to, given use of the library or given increased use in the downtown, which would be fantastic, um, if we had to build the entire location, then we would have to then build into this ladder green space here along South Avenue. And that um, overall would net us well, it's approximately uh, 67 spaces or so at that point. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a feel for all three. I don't think we'd ever get to this situation here on this building. No, just, just stay with that for a second. Just looking at the numbers that you, you can pick up, uh, what is that, almost 50, you know, 67 spots. So it's really a large lot. You, you could pick up almost as many new spots as the library is asking for. Correct. And they're asking for 76 and we could get, we could net 67. From yeah. This and, and again, you know, my figures that, that Stacy's group has, has shown us is every single day that we've looked at it, there's been more than 76 open spaces in the center lot. So there may not be a need to do anything. And, and what we're suggesting, or at least what the library group is proposing is to Let's build a library, let's test it for six months or a year, let's do a study, let's see if we actually need more parking. And if we do, then let's adjust and, and make whatever adjustments we need to in the um, center lot. Um, obviously, what we don't want to disturb as much as, you know, or, or, or disturb as little as possible is the area along South Avenue, which has got a lot of trees and is, is what makes that lot look more like a park than a parking lot. Right, that's why uh, this rendition here saved that. Yeah, it, it saves time. Uh, I mean, this is why I have my, my preference for using the, 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 just the ugly grassy area along Maple. But again, the, the proposal is let's not decide that now, let's do the library, let's not change this lot, you know, and, and then at the end of construction, let's, let's see what, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else that, uh, Kevin, that you would like Tiger to share? No, I think that shows it. And, and you said a lot of trees. Actually, there are only a few very large, older, big trees. Um, and that's the price you pay if you try to begin to maximize parking. On the other hand, those islands are designed to plant new trees. Um, Correct. So, you know, it's a question of what you're trying to accomplish and um, whether you need, really need to go there. Of course, the town in the future would also have the, the possibility of wanting to do decking, which would, if it wasn't required for the library, the town would consider on its own. But, uh, you know, this just shows the possibilities that uh, could happen in the future. Yeah, and, uh, I'll just say, if with you, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but... Uh, no, oh, I'm I sorry, Keith, I just stopped. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll just, I'll share my stuff. And again, not to beat a dead horse. So here's where we're. There is this area where you can see my cursor. That is a grassy area. It's ugly. And, you know, as, as Tiger mentioned, there is a restraining wall here. So you have to be a bit careful. But this is actually a pretty wide area. I was out there doing some measurements. There is certainly enough room to put in, and that's what I've shown here, diagonal parking, one-way diagonal parking. So you'd enter here. You lose a couple spots there. But you could enter in at diagonal parking, some of which would, could be handicapped, and then you lose a couple spots on your way out. But this would be one way in and one way out, and then you come out and you can go either way. Uh, and, and even with the losing the two here and a couple here, you'll still get at least 10 spots and not lose a single tree and not uglify anything. Um, and to me, as long, and this is where you're going to have some of your containers. So this area will probably be messed up anyhow. Uh, and I would say, why not take advantage of having the construction equipment that will be there for the library and, have, and just go put in these spots, pick up 10 spots, which will probably be more than enough to satisfy uh, any problem that we're gonna have in parking. And I would hope that that wouldn't cost more than 100,000 or two. The counter argument, Keith, is that that's green space that'd be nice to preserve uh, yeah, but it's green and ugly. I mean, it's just grass. There's no trees. Because it is elevated, there's no view over here. This is the parking there, lot. There is a big tree there. <laughs> no, there isn't. We'll go back to this photograph. 
There is no tree. That's a photograph. There is no tree. There's a lovely tree here, which I wouldn't want to disturb. There's a huge There's tree no under tree. the number five. That's right. right. That's, that's what I'm referring to. And you would take that out? to. No, <laughs> no I would not touch this. This is the area we're talking about. Yeah, but to get in there, to get in Tiger, there you're really taking the number five tree out. Number five. Um, Tiger, oh, yeah, under that your comes proposal. out anyhow in the, in the current plan the, uh, during the construction. No. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. We're not taking any trees then. Uh, well, maybe we should go back because you're showing that there's handicap here. Uh, I think we might want to go back and see. But if you're saying there's a tree here we might lose, I'd say yes, but I'd say we might lose that during construction with all the equipment going across. It's a big mat mature tree, Keith. Yeah, and those trees can be hurt very easily by having construction equipment be here. Oh. I mean, things parked here. We'll see if it lasts through construction. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. uh, again, that's not really for us to discuss because that's a nuance we'll cover in you know, okay. Can we, can we continue with Tiger? Yes. Uh, I'm curious, Tiger, under your proposal to put in 67 additional spots, what are you estimating the cost of that to be? Well, we, first off, we're not, we're not proposing to install those. I understand that. The, uh, you know, the thought is that, you know, post library expansion and- In three years. Yes. Okay, and what are we estimating the cost of that to be? We had uh, at sixty-seven spaces. We were looking at approximately two and a half million to two and a half million dollars. Go and do that entire lot over again. Okay, and if instead of simply cutting down trees and getting rid of ugly grass, um, we were to deck the lot, Whoa. then what would it cost, <laughs> roughly? It's about forty-five thousand dollars a space. Okay, so, so how does the library come up with a number of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars per space for underground parking? Different construction. Well, obviously. So you know you're building a building on the top of it. Plus they're having to dig down. Right here, we would just be building up. It's a little bit different. So yes. when we estimated at Locust, it was about forty-five thousand dollars a space for the locust lot because we weren't really going in, we were going up. Um, there was some excavation, but not a lot. The library was gonna have to dig down and then build up from there and then put a structure on top of it. Okay. So, uh, and and the, their, their site was a little bit more constrained than, uh, than the opening here. So is 130,000 reasonable by industry estimates? We looked at their numbers and yeah, we weren't, we might not have been at 130, but we were at 110. So okay. at that point in time, you know, it's twice the cost of a decked lot. So okay. I think that they're reasonable. So by giving up the center lot, the 76 parking places, the town is essentially giving over to the library an additional $10 million. Uh, actually, if you added it 50,000 a spot, you'd say the equivalent of 3.8 million, but Considering we haven't been utilizing those spots um, ever, you know. It, uh, it, I'm simply multiplying the, the library's number of 76 by 110,000 per space, which is on the low side of their estimate. That brings me out to roughly $10 million. I, I hear you, Peter, but you know, the Parking Commission historically has said that we think parking spaces are worth 50,000 each. That's what we've told the a planning and zoning group many times, and at fifty thousand a spot, then it's three point eight million, which is, which as you say, it's one way to quantify what the ask is here. Right, but planning and zoning, of course, thinks that a parking spot can be built for five thousand dollars. So opinions vary. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so. Uh, again, I come back to the 76 spots at 110,000, it's $10 million. This is the equivalent of the, the grant that the town is proposing to give to the library. Yeah. 
But We're giving the spots are going to the community. This is for our residents and our visitors. To, uh, so I, I don't I, I don't like to put like we're giving some foreign entity the spots and they're spots that aren't being used. So they've got no value right now or not all of them are being used. Well, there's spots for our spot. retailers. There's no, spots there's for no. our patrons of the farmer's market. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to find spots for the patrons of the far farmer's market and we're going to meet our obligation to the downtown workers right. uh, if we go through, through to this. So, and if spots are sitting empty every day, I don't see putting this enormous value. Um, it's important. And these are our residents uh, who are going to come park here. Well, if it's not an enormous value, then why don't we have the library pick it up? They can spend the ten million dollars underneath their building. Because well, remember, the dam is up. That that, that uh, option was dismissed based on disruption to parking patterns. That was not dismissed based solely on cost. That was untenable to have all those cars pulling on, onto Main Street. That's why that they dismissed that proposal. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Um, Jennifer, is there anything you'd like to comment at this time? Jennifer Donovan, maybe you're muted. I'm afraid I'm... No, nope, everything's fine. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Are there any other comments by anyone at, at the meeting? Yeah, Keith, can I speak again? Mike Galante. Please, Mike. Yeah, just to go back to the parking numbers. Uh, when we were looking at parking need or parking demand months ago, we really took three different ways of looking at it. Uh, and I'll try to summarize that. One was the ITE standards for parking generation, which we use 94 spaces. If you look at the three other town parking uh, libraries in the surrounding area, that's the 96 spaces that was mentioned before. And then the 102 uh, spaces, which I still recommend, was a, a combination of us and any tra traffic or parking study looks for a 10% cushion, if you will, on parking need or parking demand. That's, and again, the numbers vary a little bit, so they're off by one or two spaces, depending on the calculation. That's the 102 spaces. And the table in my report is really, it didn't explain it that well. I need to clarify that, but it was kind of a mix and combination of that. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll revise that table, but we still recommend 102 spaces, but that's the ex, ex, a simple way of explaining what happened. Michael, uh, you said IPE. What is IPE? ITE, Institute I of Transportation Engineers. And it's a document that's the documents parking generation handbook. I believe it's the fifth edition. And the, the library's consultant used the same document. The reason for the difference is the square footage of the building, uh, whether it's existing or proposed. And that, that's why it's off by a couple spaces. Okay. And again, the T stood for? Transportation. Transportation. Yeah. Institute yeah. of Transportation Engineers, ITE. Yeah. Got it. Okay. But that's, that's what happened and it's, it's internal to our office as far as the clarification. Uh, we looked at three different ways or methods of coming up with a, a comfortable number for the town to consider. And early on, we had that 10% factor in there. Yeah, I actually, uh, I've been impressed but that all the numbers seem to come out to be around the same. Yeah, Again, yeah. And then you subtract out the 26. Six spaces. 26 workers are gonna be hopefully continue to park in St. Aloysius, that takes us to our 76. 76 spaces, correct. And which should be kind of generous. And um, we have ample room, it appears in the center lot. And it should be noted, uh, I wanted to go back to one other thing that Lisa mentioned when I'd asked you about the auditorium usage. Generally speaking, that will be in periods uh, of low otherwise use of parking downtown when you'd expect the sun lot to be more empty and also for parking in the Morse Court lot, which is also adjacent to the library to be available. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a way we're really lucky as we have been all along that the library is located where it is. Um, Keith, are there any other comments before I kind of close this off and start making motions? Keith, I'd like to make a, a point. I think when you introduced um, Michael, um, he's technically, we've used him as a town, Tigers used him, but he was requested to be used by the Planning and Zoning Commission chairman. So he, uh, the, the, it's incumbent upon the P&Z Commission to specify what the parking requirement is. So therefore, Michael's technically giving advice that both Planning and Zoning Commission will use 
and then we decided as just as a matter for what the town believes so we've come up with, with the 76 number net number as something we believe will satisfy planning and zoning but also satisfies the town because i think everybody who looks at parking believes this is a very inefficient lot and um so we're basically contrary to what Peter's thinking, we're giving away something that has no value to us now because people do, do not park there. Yeah, sleeves off our best. Yeah, and plus the Morse Court parking lot is is always available, and especially during the construction period. Um, probably Morse Court um, at various times of the day will be a more attractive location for people to park. To go to yeah, although Morse Court is getting pretty high usage these days. Well, but keep in mind, the, our experiment with worker parking has really relieved the problem. And, and a number of people who had permits at the center school lot have taken permits at the locust lot because that was not available before. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And the locust lot is getting high usage too, which is, yeah, that has really worked out well. Um, again, let me open it up. Last, last chance, last bite of the apple for anyone Keith, on this call. Keith, it's Patricia. I have another question if I could. Sure, please not related to the farmer's market. Um, I know that the library is used by many seniors and it's not clear to me where the handicapped or accessible parking would be in this plan other than the, the five or six, the six spots that are right there at the entrance to the old center school lot. And I'm just thinking about my mom who's gonna be 94 in a couple of weeks. She's frequent patron of the library or will be once things get back to normal and just the thought of her walking with her walker across the street to the new entrance I'm just not clear how well that's going to work. Well Patricia Eileen uh, Linden uh, brought that up earlier um, there will be a number of handicapped spots uh, Lisa said that she calculated they're really the same distance to the entrance of the library as as the current ones are yeah, in this case, you'll have to walk across a street, Maple Street, whereas right now you're just walking across the parking lot. But in some ways, that parking, that area you're walking is like a street because it's a thoroughfare and cars are going through there. It's probably about as much as they go through Main Street, or at least almost as much. So I don't see too much of a, um, a, a hurt to the handicapped people. Um, and... Again, if we need, if we eventually need to add more handicapped spots in this lot, then we will do so. Up till now, we've like never had a case when all those handicapped spaces have been taken. Right, right. Okay, I would, just wasn't sure where the entrance was to the library relative to those spots. So thank you. And and Keith, in addition, Katie mentioned that they're they're planning for traffic uh, calming measures there uh, yeah. to make sure that it is safer than it is today. Good ad, Lisa, thank you. All right, I'm gonna go and see if there's another round for any comments. Keith, can I, uh, this is Rose Long, can I uh, just- Rose? Okay, yeah, um, in the slides that you showed, you were talking about um, the recent uh, uh, usage and availability of the spaces. And um, you mentioned it in the, the next slide that um, a lot of this information was done during COVID, but the recent usage and where you were saying all these spots were available is absolutely, you know, the last month or so. So definitely during COVID. I just want to mention that. And, I, you know, and that's a fair point. Um, let me just pull those figures up again. But, uh, you know, you have to understand right now we have 209 permits being used. And that 209 permits that's not that much different than the 227 we've had in prior year, you know, the previous year, and that was pre-COVID. Um, and you know, I'd like to add that town is fully functioning um, right now. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a quieter time of year for sure, but all the restaurants are open, all the stores are open. Um, you know, we're certainly down a few stores, uh, but you know, town is up and fully functioning and stores are, are operating. Well, a lot of these um, numbers that you're so showing seem very similar around the different lots also, um, some of your percentages. So anyway, I just was mentioning the, the slide right before this was well, all. And this, so month. in this one, when you, when you look at the available spaces, it's not like we have a situation where there was, you know, 77 available. I mean, 
the, the lowest is 80 here on this Tuesday, but much of the time there's over a hundred spaces available. Well, I just, I just know in the past, um, I actually have been a volunteer at the library over the years and I know I've had to park over there and in the past, um, it was actually a little difficult to get a spot, so. Well, just let me say, uh, and again, I don't mean to be on the floor. There is a lot of parking spots here. I, 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 like most of us from New Canaan, we have a parking myopia and we only see what's near us. Um, hey, walk, I like to walk, little, thank you. I usually park <laughs> the farthest away. Well, you're a good one. Uh, yeah. I, I've been dealing the last 20 years with people say, oh, the, you know, there's no parking because there's no parking like right on the, right here. I, I, where I, there I, might be a lot of parking and there is yeah. over here. I agree, I hear the same statements and um, I, I'm very much of a, you know, park away from the front door. But anyway, but that's just my weirdness, I guess. Yeah, well, you're good. But again, as this picture illustrates, Look, these spots are taken, and look how empty all of these spots are. And that's, you know, been our issue with this parking lot for the 20 years I've been on the parking commission. It's always been underutilized. All right, so what I would like to do now is to uh, make a proposal. Um, and um, the proposal, I would say, is simply that the uh, parking commission recommends to accept the new library projects parking proposal, both for the uh, construction during the construction period and post the construction period as set out in the memorandum of understanding, which was passed around and is now a public document. Um, do I have a second from someone on the parking commission? I'll second that. Thank you, Laura. Uh, any discussion? All right, then I move that we vote. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand and speak up so I will see you. I have my hand up. So, okay, Laura, her hand is up. Peter, is your hand down or up? Down. Down. Jennifer? Up. Up. Okay, so that proposal carries three to one. All right, I don't think we in fact have another uh, order of business. I mean, if we did, I would love to recommend that we push the library to uh, do my little addition that I proposed about uh, adding the 10 spots or so along um, Maple. But I'm happy to let that wait until we go through the process set out in the proposal that we let the construction go forward and then we see what the pattern is. And then, and then we cross that bridge. So I will not make a proposal on that. But if there's anybody else on the commission who would like to make a proposal or comment, here's your opportunity. No? Okay, then I move we adjourn this meeting and thank you all for, for joining us. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you. Second. Okay. All in favor? Fine. Aye. We adjourn. It is 348. Aye. Thank you, Keith. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.